band. At this time, please stand and remove your hats. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to high school football, or should I say... Well, folks, I guess in a way you could say welcome to the mud bath, or welcome to the pirate mud bath, as we've had over two inches of rain already today. And more coming over the weekend. At junior, left tackle number 60, Last year when Perryville was at DeSoto, Perryville took a, was tied at the halftime, but then was able to get a touchdown by not for sure who that would be. Perryville had over 27 or, or more seniors last year and only just a couple this year. They got Eric Roth, uh, Marcus Mahalta. And we'll get to those later. In a few minutes, we're actually going to have another moment of silence because it was, we were expected to have both teams out here, but we didn't have both teams out, so we will be doing another moment of silence. So in case you're wondering where the wet spots are or are a, a little bit less on the field, in the middle, it's pretty dry. On the lines where the teams are, of course, are pretty wet. That's why the band is not out here for the morning warm-up or good 
or afternoon warm up. Since we have a few minutes before the game starts, I want to remind everybody, last year Perryville was a Class 4 District 1. This year, after talking about going to Class 3, they finally did go to a Class 3 school. So the teams in their district, we will see four of them, but you'll only see two of them here on PVTV as it's St. Jen we'll see in Park Hills Central that we will also see here for senior night for Park Hills on October 5th, September 28th, or whatever that the last Friday of September is, we'll see St. Jen. So now we're gonna do the moment of silence. But we also had Kennett, Dexter, and Donovan also in our conference, along with Potosi and Fredericktown. For themselves, for Coach Ames, in memory of all he has done. And welcome back uh, after the moment of silence, national anthem and all. I've been able to find some history. Perryville last won the state championship back in 1985. Steve Wonderlich was the head coach in that time, time in that era. That era, I was not even around at that time to give you an idea how long ago it was. So, anyways... As we were saying, we're here at Pirate Stadium at Wet Pirate Field and a scarce crowd here as we get ready to go, get underway. Number 31 for Perryville is going to kick it off. Number, not for sure, on so, but you can see on your screen he's going to run. And we're going to be tackled about the 25-yard line. Perryville has won the toss, by the way, for, for those folks that didn't get to see that. And they, of course, will defer, so that means Deso will have the ball. Perryville will have the ball to start the third quarter after the halftime show. Great evening for football. I think the rain maybe it stopped for a little bit. The quarterback is in mission. Going to hand it off to a running back. You gotta be tackled, maybe backed up for a few yards and then picked up a few yards, actually. DeSoto, as we've all heard on uh, MIMO Info and KFMO radio stations all out of the Farmington area, DeSoto has some pretty strong players. Uh, nobody has given us the height or weight, but a pass out a little bit, Chuck. The fans are applauding, and uh, that's a good sign when the fans are applauding for with, for one of the sides, or for actually both sides. And bring down third and eight. Ball, ball at the 27-yard line. Mike Wortman over to my right in the next booth with the PA announcing. Referee Todd is out there behind the boys. DeSoto's going to 
Look, a sh little shot pass. You're going to pick up a, a few yards, and that looks to be enough for a Pirate first down. And that will be a Pirate, or sorry, a, DeSo a Dragon first down. Both teams are green and white. Perryville in the dark, in the all green except for white numbers and white stripes on the shorts. Or DeSoto white top, tops and green, you know, or green pants with the white helmets with the green dragon on them. They're going to line up in a, a formation that you might see. Perryville looks to go maybe a blitz. Number 15 for the quarterback. DeSoto, I mean, uh, for DeSoto, number 15. So, DeSoto, what DeSoto was trying to do there, kind of approach to see if Perryville was going to want to jump off sides with uh, uh, doing something with the snap count. Perryville showed discipline there, and they're mixing people up. Let's see what they can do. A little shovel pass, but he's going to run out a little bit. Number two with the ball's going to be down. Is that going to be a Brings up third and 13. So the last time it was a third down and 11, Perryville's defense was not able to hold. Let's see if they are, their defense can hold on this one and give their team the ball with uh, some good, uh, good field position. Perryville's got two guys in the backfield like Roth and one of the other men right around the 38, I'd say. Or, there's going to be a pass. Oh, Perryville almost had it. Number 36 for Perryville. Just about had that. Seth Riesel, Riesel a, a senior, also a member of Walmart. Just about had that ball. Riesel, with great speed, is going to kind of run back here, as you can see to the right. Once we get a shot of him, and uh, oh, the is going to fake it. Oh, let's see what Perryville can do. It, that is going to bring up great field position at the twenty. And DeSoto was trying to got, run Perryville like, "Hey, we're going for it," and they were trying to go for it, or they they were going to try to. It was a fumble, and and that, by the way, that si those sirens that you're hearing is not the uh, buzzard here at the football field. It's one of the local police officers hanging off somewhere. Fumble, by the way, bring on that last play. So Harryville will have it in great field position. Drew Hotop, number four, and he's got he's got number 29 in the backfield. Harryville's gone. Run here. Let's see if they can get in. Do, what do we have? We're going to. It's going to bring up a first and goal. And at the six-yard line. As old Daryl Nicewanger would say, that was a good for a Perry of a Pirate first down. You betcha. Sorry, Daryl, I didn't mean to say you're that old, but. Perryville ho top with it. He's going to keep it, and he's going to try to get a yard or two. That's so going to bring up a second and goal, and we're going to. And he ran back two yards to second down and eight, second goal at the eight-yard line. So we're going to see if they can uh, do better than the Philadelphia Eagles did last yesterday evening and lost five to nothing to the Cleveland Browns. Final preseason. 
So it's going to bring up a third and goal. Unless we have a flag, which I have not seen any of those yet. It's going to be a third and goal at the 10 yard line. So 10 yards from a score. Let's see if we can uh, get the first score of the evening right here for the Pirates. Hotop hands it off to 22. Was it 22? And his helmet comes off. And that was Austin Cook, a senior. No, no gain on the play according to the scoreboard operator. Actually, it missed a yard. Okay, so it's going to be fourth down 11. So let's see what Perryville's going to do. And it looks like they're going to go for a field goal. Number 31 for Perryville. Eli Brick. Rigger. His kick is up and good for the first points of the game. Perryville three, or should we say, yeah, DeSo zero, Perryville three. So a fumble from DeSoto and that cost them as it was lined up to fumble or punt, but Perryville was able to get that that ball and uh, was able to make it on a fourth down, went for the, or excuse me, went for a field goal. <laughs> it's not even hot and they're asking for a water break already. And we're going to get um, scores whenever we get them. White division season standings have Perryville in second place behind Park Hill Central. So uh, we're going to look here to see if we got any new scores. Uh, score stream here. We got Cape Central 10, North Carolina zero. That's good for them. It's a conference. It's a class game. We got Dexter at St. Jen, so that's a class opponent, district opponent, and those are two of the schools Perryville will be able to visit. Perryville kicked it off. DeSoto's number. We're going to get that number 22. He's off and he's going to run. He's going to run and run and run until he cannot run anymore like Forrest Gump. And, he, and that's going to be a kick turn, return for a touchdown. Six points will now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on folks. No time to celebrate right now. We got flags on the play, and it looks like it might be coming back. As Perryville's walking this way, let's see what Mr. Todd has to say. And that's going to be against DeSoto. Holding. So, so that wipes off the six points that he uh, just got. But
It's going to bring up first down and 10 for Deso at the 20 yard line. Like in the Eagles game, or not in the Eagles game, but in the Colts game on Tuesday evening or so, or actually Monday evening, there were several penalties after the kickoff. So it's kind of seeming like that type of a, a game. Indianapolis ended up losing 19 to 20 to Baltimore in a preseason game. He so the quarterback, he's going to hand it off and not run, run made by number four by DeSoto. Garrett Heaster, a sophomore wide receiver. Jersey number 55, or correction number four. If you see number 96 for DeSoto, that will be their kicker according to their roster up here. Ron May in here. Up to about the 30. 25, maybe 30. So it's going to bring up a third down or third down and one. Perryville would love to stop them back here. A good momentum shift if they can stop them after giving up the touchdown. I believe the rain has stopped because nobody's got their umbrellas up now. Quarterback's knee. Let's see if Perryville. Oh, Perryville's going to punch them back. Let's see if they had enough for a first down, though. It kind of appears that they did. Briar Fisher, a junior. The quarterback, they also have uh, Ethan uh, Reesing, it appears to be the pronunciation, as also a quarterback. Head coach, by the way, is Chris Johnson for DeSoto. They're going to pass. He's got a guy man, man wide open, and he's got it. That's going to be a long pass. That's probably going to bring up about a 25, 30-yard pass, or maybe a little less than that. Also on the DeSoto sideline is uh, Steve Dalton over there taking foes. So... We at least know he's here. Number 15 is the quarterback for DeSo. Let's see here. He's got two wide out. 22. He's going to go back. Just a tad. He almost went backwards. So it's going to bring up about a second down, and I'm going to guess 12 maybe. Well, apparently I guessed right, or the scoreboard operator heard me say that, so either one of us two guessed or got the right guard marker. Ball at the 48-yard line. Three minutes and 15 seconds to end of the first quarter here on PVTV 985. Also on YouTube. Runner back is going to try. He's going to try to get back to the original line of scrimmage before that that yard. It's going to bring up about third down and 11, so he actually gets one yard and not two. Let's see if they're going to run there or pass. They got about 20 seconds to decide before the play clock runs out. So he's got two men over here on on the pirate side of the field and one wide receiver's got his worm back. He's gonna he's gonna look, he's gonna try he's gonna pass. 
Number 44 has it. He's going to gonna bring up a fourth down, it appears. I believe that may be a fourth and four and one. Todd's going to talk about it. Going to look. We're actually going to have a timeout for our official measurement. Our official measurement correction. And a link chart. So it's going to be a fourth down and one. Now these so those guys are like, let's play jump to Brook as they were jumping over the line. We're going to measure it one more time and maybe another. Let's see if it's the same. And it is. Four, so not even fourth down and one, but fourth and about a half of an inch. They're going to make, they're going to push it here. Let's see if Perryville's defense can stand up here. Quarterback sneak. That's going to be a first down, DeSoto's players are saying. That was a first down in number 74, big 74 there for DeSoto. Uh, Wyatt Mouser, or Mauser. A junior is the one that was able to push him uh, for that extra few inches. So two two fourth downs and uh, actually two third downs, and they went far and made it. But then the fourth down they, in the inches, they could have planted it. They could have made an interception. Seth is going to be moving here on this play. Perry DeSoto is going to pick up a few to about the 30 of at least that's where one of the officials are standing. So number 15, he's going to say hike. Give it up. It's going to be a first down. As of 10 minutes ago, no score from Valley Catholic as St. Vincent is there tonight. That was on Twitter. We're about ready to run the, to run the end of this quarter here. Now, Perryville's go. We'll talk. We'll talk about that next here. And pass complete, but it'll bring up a third down. And we're still probably gonna have one, at least one play. Third down and ten. Third down and nine. And this might not, that might have just been the last play. Anyways, next week, Perryville's got a long drive. I'm talking long, guys. You think St. Louis is an hour and a half drive. Well, you they got to go longer than that. I mean, Perryville's going to be at, at, out there by Rolla next week at 
St. James, Missouri to play them at 7 p.m. At the end of the first quarter, DeSoto zero and your home, Perryville Pirates three. Our correction, okay, at the end of, in the first quarter, St. Vincent 0, Valley Catholic 7. Everybody probably just about uh, knew that was going to, well, might happen. Continuing to look at this. Crystal Scene traffic, nothing. Or 15 for so and he's going to run a few yards. But it's going to bring up a well short of a first down, so it's going to be a big fourth down here. It's going to bring up a fourth down and eight, and let's see if the Pirate defense can hold here. I would think that DeSoto would, one, do a um, punting here. They're going for it, and he's got it, but to 15, according to KTJJ. Um, Grimmott on the uh, defensive tackle. Nope. Nope. 15, the quarterback is in the motion. He's going to give it to his running back. He's going to pick up a few, but not enough to get into the uh, goal. And as a few of the players come off the field, I don't see that much mud, so maybe we're all, all thinking the field is muddy, but it might not be that muddy. The wind it ha did blow a little, a little bit earlier today, so that might have helped dry the field out here at Pirate Stadium. Oh, we're going to have a flag. Or no. Timeout? What's it? Time? Okay. So Dragons will take a timeout. One score to kind of follow We're currently in the first quarter all the way from down there in the boot hill. One of the district opponents, actually two. Uh, and in the first quarter, Fredericktown 7, Kennet Indians 22. That is a district opponent. So 
Just wanted to kind of get that information to you. North County now 14, Cape Central 10, Jefferson 7, Bishop, LeBerg, Cavaliers 0. <laughs> Northwest 0. Princess Howell, North House St. Louis 0. And of course, we got 3. So we'll be. Apparently that's all of the uh, scores I got. Or all the important scores, I guess. Festus Sierra North or Fox Seven. <laughs> Run made by the DeSoto runner back. Taken down by number seventy. Here in the booth, that's Brad Ernst, a junior. And we also have Union Wildcats, zero, and Farmington Knights, three. So a lot of scores and a lot of teams playing in the area. That's all on score stream. Third and eight. Let's see what goes on now. And DeSoto's going to get it to about the eight-yard line. And that will not be good enough yet, I do not believe, for a first down. So it's going to bring on a fourth. Fourth and five. Uh, their kicker, DeSoto's kicker. Which is Sean Brooks is out. He's a senior now. He's going to line up for, I don't know, what would you consider, what, 27 yards? And there's a block. So Perryville was able to block the field goal. So Perryville now has the ball and Hotop had it. So folks, I know you were wanting to see the band, but I've been told that they are not going to be out there tonight because of the field conditions being too wet. So we'll just have to wait till the 21st when it's the the big crosstown rivalry game, St. Vincent at Perryville. Oh, top in the backfield. He's going to pass over to number five, and he dropped the ball, but then was able to recover it. That's Carter Dix, a junior. Going to bring up about a third down and 10 ball at the 19 yard line. I was going to say, oh, third down and 11. Okay, they're backing it up on me. Remember, folks, if it gets a little loud out here, be quiet because the, pl the players need to know their call that they're going to be using. Hello, Darren Deckard is now in the studio. Hotop was, I believe, had the ball, and he will – drop a yard so Perryville hasn't been able to do nothing except for that great field position earlier when DeSoto had fumbled it now now Perry DeSoto I don't know here I don't know what you're thinking here because you guys were on fourth down twice 
he went for it and made it. So, you know, you almost got to think, is Perry again trying to do something like that? You know, you never know. They might be faking trying to throw a ball. It's a punt, and it's going to drop. It's going to take a Perryville Pirate bounce. Perryville's number 52. Clayton Steffens, a junior, will down it at about the 48-yard line, the Pirate 48-yard line. Or... Well, in the second quarter, it will be, yeah, the Pirate 48 yard line. On the left side of the 50. Ladies and gentlemen, members who support Classic Graduation will be having a 50-50 drawing held tonight. And we will be announcing that winner after the uh, third quarter. So, again, help support Classic Graduation. Get some 50-50 tickets, and you can be a big winner. So there's the cheerleaders way over there to the left. We don't have a cheering roster for you. So we will get one by the time the St. Vincent Perryville game comes up. We got Park Hill Central Rebels at St. Clair. Second quarter. This is big for Perryville. St. Clair 21. I know it's early in the season, but you got to start already thinking about your opponents. Hillsboro 6 Eagles 0. Perryville's going to drop them back for about a yard. Yeah, I'm looking at this right. Sinclair zero, okay. Normally it's the other way around, so you almost... Looking to see if we have anything from Valley anymore. Apparently we don't. DeSo number 15, he ha the handoff to that run back. Now Perryville Pirate defense is saying, hey, we're all already five and a half minutes till halftime. And we're kind of willing to, you know, control this because you're going to get 10 points. Here for just playing DeSoto, so that, that that could be huge come playoff time. And if you can score 35 points or more, I also believe you'll get an extra additional few points. Next week they go on a road to play a Class 3 school. All the, the whole entire schedule, there's only three schools that are not Class 3. You're looking at one of them right now. DeSoto is going to drop pass. Perryville's going to have him. It's going to be about the 40, 44 yard line. All right, correction, Andrew down 44, tied in with the ball. As it's going to bring up a fourth down. And we're going to see here what DeSoto wants to do. Rousseau is in the back area. But they're sending the punt, but you got to watch it. Remember earlier, it was a fumble. Perryville, and there's going to be a timeout. Timeout for Perryville. So they kind of want to talk about, you know, how they're going to set up for this play. Hey, Pirate fans, you hear those chillers? Why don't you make some noise for them? Ready? 
Folks, you're not going to believe this, even though we may tell you a few times, but Valley Catholic 7, St. Vincent 0. So DeSoto will, in fact, punt. It's going to take up higher uh, DeSoto bounce to about the 15-yard line. It's a good toss, and look out. This kid's got speed, Roth. Is it going to bring up a second down here? I'm bringing the, maybe a second down and 15. Second down, 13. Okay, ball at the 17-yard line. Did pick up two yards there by Eric Roth, a senior. I may I stand correct. Hotop, let's see what he wants to do. He gets it. Sees a tight end or wide receiver. He's going to go. Ooh. That was a hit. I mean, that almost, you could hear it from all the way up here in the booth. I mean, and one of DeSoto's players uh, bumped his player, so I'm surprised we don't see sport unsportsmanlike conduct right there. I mean, that big 74, he's pretty tall. I mean, be pretty strong. Not for sure what the uh, holdup here is. So Perry wants to talk it over, and rightly so they will. And folks, here in about 20 minutes or so, we're going to, that Cardinal game is going to be starting out there in Mile High City. Herculeum 9, Cuba 2. Zalma Bulldogs, by the way. Andrew Hotop, he's saying, hey, you know what? We had it. I'm going to go, and I'm going to run. I'm going to be like Forrest Gump. A long run by Drew Hotop, that quarterback. Man, that kid's got some speed, folks.
You know, maybe, maybe it's th that run was maybe induced by his uh, mom run winning the uh, election that she had ran for. That was Jennifer Otop's uh, son. So maybe that had something to do with that run there. Perigo's going to try again for it. We're going to get closer and closer and closer. But, hey, Perryville, you guys got to start watching that clock. Was that Ethan Daldry? Minute 20 some to go until half. DeSoto, Perryville had lost it, and DeSoto is saying they had it. But I believe Perryville keeps it. Not for sure, but I almost could have sworn that Perryville held on to it. Yeah, per third and four. We have a 15 minute halftime show. So we're going to bring up fourth down and five. I believe that's going to be the last play. Okay. Thank you, sir. Some of our fans have just announced. Perryville's going to run down and now he's going to kick it. So Perryville has a chance to get six points here before the half. As you're listening to court, or as you're hearing me talk and also seeing it on TV of PVTV football. Kennett is really beating Fredericktown 29 to 7. Potosi 28, Duchesne, Owensville 7. And that's going to be a block. And the sub's going to get, and then the clock's going to stop. And we're only going to have a 15 minute halftime show. Will not be taking the field tonight. There is a 15 minute halftime followed by a three minute start before the game.
Well, folks, welcome back after a brief. Shout out the Kenny Shout out the Kenny Foff and his family and they care about Scott C. And also no score uh, as far as I know from Denver. Okay, never mind. The Cardinals are now winning one to nothing. So we're getting ready to Wow, a lot of people are applying for a St. Vincent score, and uh, rightly so, because we're going to see them next. Here. Hey, folks, I know it's a long time off, but homecoming is October 20th. And for those that I graduated with, I know one's out there on that field, Brent Roth, yes, one of the coaches. We have our 10-year reunion, not this coming October, but the next. So that date for that game, and we already need know who we're going to be playing. For this year, it's going to be Sumner. Next year, it's going to be... Porridgeville on October 12th of 2019. So all of you O-Niners I graduated with, yes. Finally, 10-year reunion. They'll be coming up pretty shortly. So start making, you know, preparation. And, uh, you know, I know a few years back we always was talking about the Holiday Inn finally getting built. It's finally open, been open for Probably since June, so go out there and check that new hotel out by Walmart. Also, don't forget to support all of your athletic areas and soccer and football. Of course, like tonight, basketball, not yet. Volleyball still coming. And remember, the St. Vin the Perryville Volleyball Tournament is October 20th. September 30th, it's a Saturday all day, at the high school, middle school, Perry Bark Center, and maybe another location to be named. By the way, Tyler O'Neill is the one that helped the Cardinals out to get on the scoreboard. So, And a pooch punt there. Everyone's going to jump, play with it. 
Herville's going to run it, and we're going to be just about by the guy. It looks like it's on the bike, but no. I seen a little blue flashing light somewhere. So we're going to be right about the 30-yard line, folks. Actually, the 40, apparently. Now the 30. Okay, now the guy cranked. By the way, I'm Lane King for PVTV. Cody will probably not be with us. I've been told there is a surprise that Mr. Cook has up his sleeve. But, um, of course, I haven't heard about that. When we know, we'll try to let you know. We already calling a timeout now. I guess take a delay a game, maybe. It's going to be a delay a game for Perryville Pirates. That's going to be a five-yard penalty or no false start. All right, Pirate fans, what do you say? Let's pump these uh, players up here in the cheerleaders. I know you, you're you doing a great job with the youth uh, or with the high school um, special cheerleading squad. Harville's trying to run. We're going to be up to about the 25-yard line now. So that's going to be the second down and... The official score has not popped up yet. They have not made it yet. We're still waiting and uh, waiting and not for sure what's going on here. Now it's second down and 15, so no gain. And the clock's running down. Hotop in the backfield. He's got a guy in motion. He's going to – he's actually going to try to take off, and he's going right to get some – Yardage back. That looks to be enough for a pair of a pirate first down. And we're going to see if the chains are going to move here. Todd says, go ahead and move those chains. You heard the announcer. Thank you, Todd. By the way, speaking of homecoming, like I mentioned earlier, Todd and his this crew, Mike Voicek said, Harmon Perryville coach, uh, uh, this crew at um, Raft, when Perryville actually beat Sumner 12-6 to six to open up a season a few years back. So kind, kind of give you a little bit of history. And Sumner is out there by the old sportsman-like ball field. Hotop's going to take off for a run. Man, that Hotop is probably going to be listed as a runner back on. We're actually going to mark him as a runner back here on this roster. I don't know what the coaches are doing, but he's their uh, he's their closer, I guess you could see. Say as uh, all baseball teams have closer, and uh, you know. Maybe the, the maybe he's eating that that that, that thing that they're calling the, the Matt Carpenter sauce. I mean, I mean, I had some sauce yesterday, and I didn't even get tired till midnight after working long hours at Walmart. I Man, it must have been that sauce that kept me going. And apparently, whoever made that penalty did not have some any Matt Carpenter sauce. Okay, Valley 27, St. Vincent 7 at half. Micah Wortman, I don't know if you got that, but if you didn't, that's fine. If you did, that's yeah. Just going to bring up 
Back to the original line of scrimmage after the from the penalty. Perryville's going to try to get number 25. He's, he's raying a little bit and fought, maybe be fighting a little bit. James Rode in number 26, a senior. And he's one of them that was on the Dream Team town. At him. He's going to play at, as good, well as he can for his former classmates. And now, now after a few good plays, Roden's going to come over here to the sideline and take a breather and get some air and players tapping them on the head, saying you're doing a good job, eh? Keep up the hard, good work. Number 22 has... And he tripped up. So Cook, a runner back. Slash wide receiver. That, so it's gonna be your ring about four ten and six. Perryville's going to punt. It's going to take a pirate bounce. And it's going to, we're going to get at the 20 yard line as that will be a touchback. See if we can. Uh, Get our fans more pumped up with a uh, once it comes up here. Halftime score Park Hill Central zero. St. Clair 34. Is that half? Ken in the second quarter. Potosi 41, Owensville 7. Trying to find the score for you. North County beating Cape Central. No score yet from Scott City Grandview Eagles for King Fault and his family. By the way, King was all n nice enough to get a deal going with at Bush Stadium on uh, September 11th with the Highway Riders Car Club. So that'll be the Car Club night. So don't don't forget to watch Cardinal baseball and kind of say, "Oh wow, there's so and so we know from Perryville." Enjoying some good sauce in one of the, you know, expensive rooms with a cold drink or so. Third down and one. I'm hearing somebody say that's the first down. Hang on, we gotta wait to see what the rest says. You can't make that call, fans. The rest said first down because he heard the fan. Now I'll say this, Mike over here, you won't see him. He, he's going to enjoy a Tuesday evening off. Run up there, up the middle. Roden looks like he may have made the tackle. Number 21. 
Cole Watson. A linebacker on the defensive side. Ble Baron Fisher, 15 is the quarterback. Second down and six. Actually, second down and five. Harryville's going to tackle them for a loss, or maybe it's a safe a sack. And so has a player on the ground. So I think it'll be an injury timeout. The clock's going to stop. And he is down. He's, he's going to... And we're going to have a medical visit out here. We want to thank Mid America Rehab for coming, for uh, helping out at our games. Thank you, Mid America Rehab. The players and the spectators, cheerleaders, and all will be taking knees here. This is what you do for an injury. Number 57. That was Ethan Coke, or Coke, K O C H, or Hoke, a senior. So we just hope his senior season didn't uh, end tonight. Four fifty nine to play, by the way. And still no score from Grandview. Might be lightning, not for sure. Jefferson Blue Jays seven. Fisher DeBerg zero. North County Raiders thirty six. Cape Central sixteen. Kent forty eight. Blackheads thirteen. Yes, and to have Park Hill Central Zero, St. Clair Bulldogs. And that's going to be a penalty, and I believe it might go against the Pirates. And Big 74. Or they said a white Mauser comes back in now. So after the penalty on Perryville, it's going to bring up a third down and one from about the 20, the 39 yard line. And he says, going to pick it up and then some. So, so far, by the way, Perryville is doing better than. The Eagles, because they have gotten on the board, but not yet as good as Cleveland. As Cleveland won, of course, five to nothing, so it must have been a safety in that game. Hey, same thing. Tell Seth to move up. Tell Seth to move up. Oh, rip, rip. Harryville is trying to rip the ball, according to coach and staff, and Russo. Big 60 for the Perryville Pirates. Just brings the Roth off, and that's Roy Kane, a junior. Russo's being required to. There's a pass, and it's probably got. He was out of bounds, and then he kept running.
So 3.30 to go here in this ball game. As this ball game's moving pretty quickly, I mean, we've only been in the game for an hour and 20 minutes, and we're already in just about the end of the third quarter. Some, somehow, something's got me feeling that's going to be a little longer, a little later on here in this football game here at Pirate Stadium. Hey, Pirate fans, let's make some noise for those folks already asleep or maybe out there in their backyards having a nice little party. Let me see if we wake them up already and tell them where, where they should be. Got wide receivers, and he looks to. Somebody's going to win. $125, I believe, I just have been told. That could have been you watching at home. Come on out and buy your 50 50, help support project graduation. They're already starting to collect. Let's help them out. Make all those seniors have an enjoyable project graduation at Perry Parks there in May. Not for sure to date yet. When we know for sure, we'll let you know. So it will probably give a first down to DeSoto, depending on who it's on. Yep. Okay, so after the penalty, Perryville's been a little antsy tonight. Did we get an interception? It kind of appeared that maybe we got a ball, but that's going to be a touchdown for DeSoto, maybe. It's okay, folks. We still have the whole entire fourth quarter, and... Two minutes and 20-some seconds after the kick off. That could be one out of the many wide receivers, just about all wide receivers on the bench. I think I heard Caleb Blanton, number 34. Two point. Now, Perryville, listen up. The first possession of the game, we got a field goal. So, We got some kids ready to come up here and say, hey, give me that money, Mr. Wartman. We want it. And we're going to get it. But no, kids, you got to get your 50 50 out. You still have time. Who, who's. Now, I don't know, folks, if you heard Mr. Wartman, but I believe he said that we were going to announce it at the end of the third quarter. Maybe I heard wrong. 
Squibble kick is what they're doing. Big 85 or 88 maybe. Nope. Ross, let's see how fast he can go. It's going to be about the 49-yard line, and Eric Roth, man, that kid can fly. Now, if, if, if anybody does come to the game and you're, you're watching us and you want to come, it's not that crowded. There's a lot of empty spots, and it's not assigned seats, but might want to bring out, you know, your uh, armchair. Because it's only bleachers and concrete bleachers on the other side. Come on. $3 just about to get in, folks. It doesn't take that much money to get in. And enjoy a great atmosphere here at Pirate Stadium. And Mr. Wartman's at booth number 8, by the way. Or 7. Or actually, no. Booth number 7. Hotop's going to be tackled. And there was a flag. That was Roy Kane on the uh, hold. A halftime score, Valley Catholic 33, St. Vincent 7. Just came in, so. But we are not concerned currently about the score. But we'll let that be. It's going to bring up a third down. Things are starting to slip away up on Rosier's Street in St. Genevieve. All right, boys, you heard your parents. Time to start playing, right? Or start to playing here. Riso. We have a winner, Tyler Boner.
Well, now, now, now the next person that wins, you you know what you gotta do. You gotta give it to all of us up here in the booth. We all want to enjoy some delicious food at you know, Chin Chinese Restaurant and Mary Jane. So, you know, you got you got to think about all of us coaches and announcers, broadcasters, wherever we may be. We still deserve some delicious food. So, you know, think about doing that next time. I'm just joking with y'all. I can smell the food already cooking at McDonald's. It's going to take a pair of a bounce. So we're only 11 minutes and 50 seconds away from me there. I'm not even going to say. I said it once before and it happened. You know, maybe that Tyler Boner, maybe maybe he ordered some pizza for the school, Mike. I don't know. He did, he did get some of his m money back, so maybe the rest of it was buying pizzas. So If you did that, Tyler, you forgot to bring it up to the booth. I'm sorry, dude. Number 59 for Perryville on the tackle. Movement on Perryville, it appears. Yeah. Or no, it's going to be on DeSoto. So... Second down and 13. We've actually finally went back to old times, folks. There's one camera up here. Not enough students in Mr. Cook's class to do a full broadcast. I gotta try for it. And, and ball completed. Dominic Carroll. on the tackle. Sorry, I was looking at Perryville. That's Andrew Downs, a tight end, a senior. First down 10 here. I got a pirate down. He looks to be and he's back on his feet before the trainers could even come out. It's gonna be number seventy for the pirates. Brad Ernst. Yeah. 
It's going to be a run. By DeSo, number four. Garrett Hurst. And some of our old fans are young defense boys. You hear your mom and dads and brothers and sisters. I don't know if you can hear us, but they're requesting you to do defense. Don't let them down, you know. If you, if you do what they want you to do, maybe they'll do something special for you, you know. Take you to Outback Steakhouse in Cape and, you know, let you splurge on a $50 steak. Come on, guys. What do you think? Let's help, them, help your mom and dad out right here. There we go. Oh, I guess they heard it. Somebody must have texted somebody and said, hey, you're going to get to go to Outback and have a $100 steak now. Three defenders. Oh my goodness, that was some good, good Domino's pizza. Oh, fumble. Be incomplete. It was a penalty against Dragons. And cheerleaders, I don't know if you can hear them. Defense. They're saying defense. Well, okay, so now that Mr. Cook's in the studio, we got to get back to football. There's going to be a pass. 
It's Maryville going to get incomplete pass, but it's going to bring up a fourth down. Perryville has life, and you know what? These fans and somebody behind me are sure is going to probably get ready to get pumped up if um, Perryville can, would love to pull off a big W tonight, folks. Cook was an intended man, not Mr. Cook, uh, Austin Cook. Hey, speaking of radio, I do believe there is a radio rodeo going on in Cape. Hey, we got a uh, Mr. Wortman. I don't know if you can hear me, but we have a boys soccer final, Perryville 4 and a Jonesboro 1. Well, the boys have won their first game of the season on the soccer team. In yeah, Murfreesboro, um, not Murfreesboro. Anyways, Perryville's up here running a little bit. You know what Perryville could do if they would are interested. It's Friday night. Nobody's got school tomorrow. We could play a little bit of OT, even though you want to win in uh, regulation. It's just a thought. Hotop gives it to uh, Roden. He's going to pick up a first down. Well, the way Perryville's defense has been playing the last drive, they were able to keep DeSoto back there. And now with the first down, let's see if that gives some momentum for the Pirate O line. We are zooming in, for those who kind of wondered, can we? Perryville up the middle for a few yard gain by Roden. James Roden, as Wortman likes to yell it. Actually, no, Wortman, Roden wasn't out there. Okay, sorry about that. Caleb Grimaud. Are groomed. Hey, folks, we got a f member of Mr. Cook's class with 10 views. Go out there and uh, promote it. Help, help him out. Get, give him some uh, publicity out here. He's doing a great job on the camera. Perryville's going to try to make a few yards up. They, they heard he's doing a great job, so they want to give him a touch of win tonight. So. And there comes the speedster. 
Eric Roth. 3.33 left to go in case you might, might be, may be getting a little bit of concern. Pizza is $2 in case anybody doesn't know it's no. False start for Perryville. And we actually get to see how the uh, professional structure gets does. It's not even nine o'clock, folks. Come on. Wow, look at that nice view. Kent Indians, 48. Black has 13. St. Pius, 35. Windsor, 7. St. Jen, 14. Dexter, 0. Okay, folks. Rams, 43. Greenview Eagles, 0. So showing blitz. It's like, I got this guy. Roth. He's not going to make it on the first down. So we're going to see what the Perryville Pirate offense is going to do. See if they're going to go for it. They still have two timeouts left. And they're got, it would be a four-yard gamble if you wanted to go for it. On fourth down and four, but you got to figure out what you want to do. As James Roden, by the way, has figured out that it is money on the football field. Man, Perryville's going to go for it, or they might be drawing all sides. No, they're going to go. I heard several whistles. So I don't know if there's like a penalty or if I heard a fly, penalty flag or not come. quarterback keeper. Mr. Cook, what do you think? Do you think Perryville's going to get back here and win, or what do you think? Oh, it's going to be tough, but they can do it. All right. <laughs> Might need to get an interception here.
It'll be third down, and I believe Perryville might be calling a okay timeout. Perryville wants to consume all the time they can, so if they can get a sack, or if they can stop DeSoto. We might have, Perryville might have a chance. Oh, by the way, Patriots three, Panthers 25 in preseason football. Broncos 23, Redskins three. These are NFL scores. And I did not want that. I'm trying to get you... Uh, no, not hockey either. There we go. Nobody's been talking about the Cardinals lately. Cardinals four, Rockies zero, top of the fourth. One out. Man on at first. It's going to bring up a fourth down. And Perryville's going to call a timeout. We'll be right back, or I will be. Make some noise, folks. Oh, yeah, you hear, you can hear these fans. They're making a lot of noise. And that probably will do it as a helmet comes off. So that player that lost his helmet will have to go off for at least one play. Perryville out of timeouts. I just heard a fan say intercept it, but um, we're not for sure about that, folks. Still currently a score. Park, Park Hill Central still no score, and they have zero. And uh, St. Clair 34. And that will just about do it, wrap up, wrap up week one of high school football. So for myself, Lane Kane, and uh, the rest of the four or five members of PVTV, 
I want to thank everybody for coming out this evening. Remember, the first home or the second home game is against the St. Vincent Indians, and that is the weekend of the East Perry Community Fair, and hopefully we'll have some coverage of that too. So that's going to be a busy Friday, and uh, that will do it. The Soto wins the ball game six to three. Is you're going to be your final. As it was a pretty tough game, no, not that muddy. We want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. And we'll see you on the 21st, unless I do a few St. Vincent home games prior. So, good night, and it's back to Mr. Cook and the crew in the studio. PVTV Live.